Four, three, two, one. It's a cycle. In the poor pit, it's a cycle. 
They do not have the power and authority to run nothing out. And they people stay in bondage. Keep following. You'll get just what you need. For your own sake and for those in your midst, you're going to get what you need. Thank you, Jesus. We bless the name of the Lord and the presence of God in the house today. And we thank God. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Yes, God. Thank you. You'll be sick as a red. Thank God for our visitors, visitors to Brother Barry. Thank God for my partner on the prayer line, my covenant partner, because he's definitely a covenant partner. All the way from Osella, Florida, we thank you. But when I met him, he was really up in the New York area. But I thank him. I only met him once this time last year. Man of God, say, I still got your mustard seed. <laughs> and they've been around the world with me on several flights. And I bless God for you. And I needed that reminder. And y'all know both sides, top, top, that it meant a little bit something to you that you didn't lose it in the last year. Hey, top, 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 top. Thank God for the prophetess being in the house today. She could have been anyway. Uh, uh, she got several ministries she's connected with. We thank God for her presence in the house. We bless God for the anointing in the house. Bless God for our pastor, the angel over this house. Thank God. Thank God we got a little bit of manners, a little bit of respect, a little bit of protocol. Anyway, thank God for the pastor over this ministry. Thank God. Bless and praise the holy name. Thank God for our assistant pastor. Elder Anderson, and thank God for our assistant pastor. Thank God for sending help, raising up help in the midst of you. Because that's what he said in his word. I will raise up one in the midst of you. So we thank God for what he's doing, even in your lives that you don't understand. That's why deliverance have to take place. See, I'm talking about what I know. I had to be delivered. I came in in 2000. I had to be delivered before I could even stand before the Lord. I'm telling you, with our wobbly knees all the time, you got to go through some deliverance to walk in it. Thank you, Jesus. We give God the glory for the porters. We praise God for our overseer. We thank God for the porters today. God bless them individually and corporately. God bless divine presence. God bless flame of fire team. God just bless and praise the name of the Lord for everyone and everybody and every part you take in my life. Dr. Ramda O for the WDDO sponsorship of Flame of Fire. I bless God for each and every one of you because you could have found somebody else to sow into, but you decided to sow into my life. So I thank you. Thank you, Minister Bonnie, for coming in. We bless God for Minister Deborah and Minister Latoya. God bless each and every one of you. Sister Dorita, God bless you. Thank you for faithfully tuning in. God bless each and every one of you. Every one of you. From the front door, Sister Emma, God bless you. To the very back door, because we don't know what angels watching over this house. But I thank him in advance for being our strong angel. I thank him for everything. Come on in, sweetheart, for everything he's doing in and in this house. For watching over our watchtower. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the hour of prayer. Thank you, Father. We just bless and praise your holy name, Lord God. I ask you to stand up in me, Lord, like never before, Lord God. And I decrease as you, the Holy Spirit, increase because it's your time and it's your season. I bless you for Jesus, my Lord and Savior, Father. But I give you glory right now for the Holy Spirit that will move and breathe upon each and every soul in here. I find the strong man. In the name of Jesus, and he is not effective right now in my life and in the church life, in this building, in this house. Thank you for the Holy Ghost that just released upon our minister, McElroy. We thank you, Lord God, for her prayers. Oh, God, they got your attention of our second little of the Thank you, Lord God, for divine favor. Oh, somebody touched him. Y'all hear me? Somebody touched him. I said she the only one. But she touched you. <laughs> oh, God, we thank you for what you released because we don't always know. Thank you for bringing us up in the spirit realm. Thank you for all these babies this morning. God bless y'all. Come on in. And thank God. May you all have a great service back there, too. We bless and praise the name of the Lord again today. Thank you all. No protocol like the Lord's. I'm telling you. When he come in and he just take over. We bless him and we thank him. I give God the glory because yesterday I didn't know if I was going to be able to stand up or not. So I brought my bench. I brought my little prop. I'm always trying to be ready. I have to kick off the shoes. I got my little slides on. So it don't make no difference. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus.
Jesus, for your praise and your worship. Thank you for the weapons of our warfare, Lord God. Thank you for sharpening us, God, in those areas that you know that we need it. We praise and bless your holy name for keeping us from falling. When the enemy came in to sift us on every side, he desired to take us out, but you said no. Mercy said no. Mm. You can't have her. You can't have him. You can't have them. Mm. Help us to lead not to our own understanding, but all our ways just trust in you. Because you got the perfect plan. My God, you got the perfect plan. And we thank you. Perfect plan for all of our lives. Mm. Open our eyes in the spirit so we can see what the spirit is saying to us. Not to someone else, but to us individually. We are your children. And the sheep are your pastors. We're not just your servants. We're your children. And we desire more of you. All of us have been captivated, been held back in some way at some time. So it's nothing to be ashamed of, but deliverance is in the house. This is a house of prayer. Even if it's one person praying, it's still a house of prayer. God, look for a place where he can dwell. And if that one sacrifices itself unto the Lord, that's the house of prayer. What he will do in that one. You just reach out and touch him. Touch the hem of his garment and watch the miraculous happen in other people's lives. Look at Brother Barrow when I met him on the line. He was not trying to minister. He's ministering this evening at, at, at Pastor CJ's first anniversary. He done been in and out of the system, but he decided that this side of the line is what he wants. I had to decide that too. I had to make that decision. You can't play on the line. You got to choose which side you're going to serve. And the Lord is waiting on every one of us to come off that line. You hear me? Every one of us got a portion of us that we have still not turned over to him. Every one of us, whether we believe it or not, there's something. Whether it was tradition of man, whether it was your old itinerary, something. Something you carry from year to year that you're so determined not to let go of. And God trying to get it out your hands so he can give you something fresh and brand new. But you are so bound and determined to hold on to what was. Oh, good God Almighty, thank you, Jesus. Help us to receive our faith, the things that you want to do in us right now. Right now. It bless me when our bishop say, Father God the first and Jesus the second, but we are the third in command and authority. We got the Holy Spirit. That's the third in command. We can command and declare and decree anything in his word, align with his will, and he's going to back us up. And we're going to walk in there. We don't want your opinion. I want the word of God. That's the only thing going to stand. That's the only thing going to help me make it to my next is the word of God. Through a pure vessel. You can't come to me with no wooden nickels and I can't see you. That's what people of God don't understand. The more you press into God property, you can help me with it. The more you press into God in prayer, the more he's going to reveal to you his secret. So he's going to start showing you things that you didn't want to see. And then people get upset with you because you see. But that's the reason we press into him so we can have the same as he had. Christ Jesus said greater, more things you're going to do. How am going to do more if I see less? Good God about it. Mm. Oh God, we thank you. Mm. I wrote this morning, I mean, a few days ago for this morning, not pressure of duty, but pressures in duty. Because that's where we at. That's where I'm at. Pressures in duty. Why are you doing? A lot of people suffer long because you out of order. But that is part of the fruit of the spirit of long suffering. Uh -huh. God graces us with that so we can keep going from glory to glory and bring somebody else out, okay? But you can suffer alone because you just out of order, hard-headed, rebellious, uh, determined not to change. So that don't count. You can sit up and try to compare it to what the leaders may be going through and some of the leaders may not. But I'm telling you, it's different. I had to find that out for myself. I said, oh God, I've been suffering for years. But a lot of stuff is from our own making. It's not the spirit and the mantle of God that rests upon us for ministry. You gotta know the difference. So don't be deceived this season. Don't spend another year deceiving yourself to think that you got what pastor got. Cause you're going 
going through. You made those decisions that got you going through. Jesus had mercy. God made the decisions or allowed or permitted the decisions for her to go through. After he killed her flesh. Because when we start out, it's always us. Me and my, me and my husband, me and my divorce, me and my children, me and my child, me and that church. But after a while, you walk out of all them meals and you stop putting it on everybody Say, me, oh Lord, I'm standing in need of prayer. This ain't about my husband, this ain't about my parents, this ain't about the church. It's about me, Lord. I'm the one out of order. Uh-huh. I'm the one. And you have to get to, everyone got to get to that point. God ain't going to let you minister to the world on top of junk. Junk got to go. Put it on the altar. I don't care how old I get. I'm going to keep going to the altar. I'm going to keep going to the altar. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. God was reminding me, and this started on the radio station because I think it was last month. We're dealing with so many mental illnesses. People are really going bananas. And the call doesn't exempt us from going through, Pastor. The call don't stop you from attack of mental illness or depression. It doesn't stop. God took me that first Kings to remind me, and it's not uncommon for God's people. We do suffer through. That's why I said depression's in duty. You're going to go through some stuff. And I find out everything that I go through will press me something else out. I found that even when I take the magnesium, the iron pills don't clog me up. So it's working for my good. It's balancing out some things. I would have never known that though if my magnesium had to went too low. And they put those infusion and then up the pill. So it built my immune system back up some more. And that's what it's still in the process of. So I left all the medications off today. I said, well, one thing about it, if, I'm, if something is causing all of this, that imbalance and why I feel like that, especially half of the day. Something's got to change. I can remember when I was living with my hair, Roy, I got to, uh, daughter, I got sick and tired of medicines, and I took them all, and I'm like, well, if it worked for one in the Bible, it'll work. I flushed everything in the commode. Amen. That stuff had me going like a yo-yo, a puppet. Amen. Just like a puppet. I said, I can't function like this. Right. If you know my nerve, I didn't know who I was, then you'd have lost half a day because you own Pharmaceutical. Right. Jesus have mercy. I just refuse to take it today. I said, maybe afterwards we'll see what I'm regulating, but not this morning. I can't stand that spirit. Oh, God, deliver us. Everybody fighting a battle of something. You hear me? There's a war going on. Pause when I choose to do right, evil always present. It's something that'll try to trip you up on their hand. Even in duties. Even in duties, even though you submitted yourself to the Lord 23 years ago, what you said since 18, it don't matter. I don't know how young you are, but we still under attack. Attack after attack. And it got nothing to do with the foolishness. Some people are under attack because that's what the life they chose. So when you choose number door, number one, two, or three, you just get what's behind that door. Not realizing when you open that door, because that's what we do. We open doors. So I was telling them just on the prayer line the other day, there were some addictions and things that I thought when I came in. If my children don't open up that door, they're going to see them. I closed them. I said, the buck stop right here. Right. Yeah. Now, you don't go and open them. They close. That's what we got to remember. Yeah. He told me about when you go. He said, sin no more. I freed you up. Why you keep going back? Uh -oh. I mean, I, I just healed you. Why do you keep coming back and you're worse than you were when you left? Because he said come back seven times stronger. Then there's a greater root on it now. Now she got to really walk on with your spirit then. Because it's got strongholds and roots on it. Some people like where they at. And they think they can make things change. But you don't have the power to change nothing, baby. God wrote the word and sealed it and shut it up. And he sealed it. And it's going to be done his way or no way. If God was going to change for tears, he'd have changed for mine. Because I sure cried for even year. I cried for that husband. Cried for that job. Cried for that house. Cried. Find out now, 23 years later, I made it better without every one of them. A whole lot better. 
lot of sickness and disease. They told me I was 35, I had lupus, and I died in six months. A lot of stuff left me when I chose the way to go. See, God called us, but he ain't going to make you choose to come. When you choose to come follow me, then you get everything I got. Even though the attacks come, it won't overtake you. He will make a way for you to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And that's because he already knew that the devil was going to attack you. So you already prepared for us in advance for what was going to happen to come. And we think we're so smart. Thank you so intelligent. We got my God. I can pray. You can pray all you want to. If you're out of the will of God, He can answer it. Jesus have mercy. Ask me how I know. Elijah, a prophet, he was also a hero. Y'all hear me? Not just a prophet, but a hero. A person of great faith. How many great faith walkers we got here now? Who you been a hero for? Your children, thank you. Fabulous. Come on. He suffered from nervous depression. One of the greatest prophets out there. And do you think you have reached that plateau yet? That God can call you great and write your name in the book of word of God for the people? I don't think we made it yet to Elijah's anointing. But we can surpass it. Because we got the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh, third in command. And then he gives you the authority. I got on both sides. That little paper, that little doctor, piece of sheet. Now they say you took your oath and your pledge. I give you the authority to walk as my assistant. But I'm not only just the authority because people ain't studying your authority if you ain't got no power. They ain't stand. Demons don't move for your authority. They will move for the power and the authority on your life. That's why you have to know you got the Holy Ghost. Because it's not you doing it. It's the Holy Ghost. He said, I will show you all things. <laughs> Woo! Good God. And I'll bring to your remembrance some things you keep saying you can't remember. I'll bring it to your remembrance. Uh -huh. Oh, God, yes, he will. Elijah the prophet suffered from depression. How many of us in here can honestly say we be depressed sometimes? Uh -huh. Most of us so fabulous and so holy, we don't want nobody to know. That I almost lost my mind last night. I almost lost it this morning in the car. Children almost made me lose it at breakfast. God already know. I heard somebody say, don't tell nobody what's wrong with you. You ain't supposed to repeat it. Well, in the word of God, when the Lord asked them what did they have need of, you got to open your mouth. So that kind of go against tradition of man a little bit right there. I ain't saying you got to broadcast it and put it on the billboard. But when the Lord asks you what you got need of, you better be able to open your mouth. And don't be too like that preacher told me, don't say I'm depressed. Or you sit there with your little depressed spirit and keep it in. Sometimes headship just not where they need to be. And they're not teaching you from the Holy Spirit. They teaching you from their remembrance of a, of emotional stuff or something that's passed out. I don't know where they're coming from. That's how you got to get in there for yourself to find out what's my legal rights. I'm tired of old state. What the word say about me? I heard what you said about Elijah. Well, what it said about me? Because see, I got the Holy Spirit. These people are walking with the Spirit. And they didn't have them and we got it in and we got less excuses. Jesus. Less. I said that on both sides. Say he was seriously depressed. Come on, y'all. Serious, friend. Oh, God. He felt hopeless. Mm -hmm. Alone. And afraid. That ought to touch every one of our houses right now. You can get to that place, especially in the midnight hour. When them demons start roaming the street between what that is, about 2 to 6 a.m., you can feel real alone and you're being pulled out your bed to pray and intercede against whatever and you almost feel like I need somebody to pray for me. And which way God taking me now because I need my rest. There's a pulling, come on y'all, there's a pulling in the spirit for intercession. And God wants to use us. He wants us to be qualified to stand before him. 
He's not trying to make it so hard for us that we can't get in his presence. He bids us to come, but you got to let your junk go at the door. You got to let it go. Because I don't care, I got one child, but if she out of order and following the wrong God, I got to let her go at the door. I got to let her go. They know I'm here. I got one grandson. He not working. But where he is he? You got to let some stuff go. Mm -hmm. That's up to y'all. You can go dragging it all you want to, but you can't bring it before the presence of the Lord. He has to be in you to come in. And you come to church. Church goes open everywhere. You can go to church. Da, 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 da. You can go to church. You can go to church 24 7. Wouldn't make no difference with the devil. The devil sitting in church right now. Amen. Sitting right up in here right now. And he's not intimidated by probably a third people up here. And that's a shame. Because we said we got the Holy Spirit. He's not intimidated by you. That says a lot right there about your relationship with the Lord. You can't even intimidate the devil. So you know he got room in your house. You need to go before the Lord. You need to really seek the Lord's face. You need to really repent. You need to really stay on the altar. You really need to call out to the Lord. Not for your pastor. Not for your hope, but you need to call out for yourself. Jesus have mercy. Oh God. Said this, he, he had low self-esteem. Elijah had low self-esteem. And the word of God said, and he wanted to die. Yeah. I just heard some people in here tell me when I told them I had been suicide. I ain't never wanted to kill myself. Well, good. Praise the Lord. Because I tried. I heard a lot of people say, hey, you take your testimony. Yes, if I was that way, that's the way I was. The man of God was too. The one I'm saying, you mean nothing now that's never been. It's been before and it is again. And everybody think they're fabulous and you're the first one of your kind. He say nothing new under the sun. You ain't all that fabulous. Somebody else got your story. Somebody else been through what you've been through, bro. Rob. Come on. God is still a deliverer. He delivered me from alcohol, from, from drugs. He delivered me from men. 23 years today. I know what he can do. I ain't telling you about nobody else's testimony. I'm telling you about my testimony. Hey, I'm going to tell you about Pastor because she got her own. Say, he, <laughs> he was the star of his own pity party show. See my wounds. See See, and we're good at doing that. God tell everybody everything wrong with you. Look at your life. Look back at your life and see what you're going through that's causing all that. See, see. You should be able to go and say, it's gone now in the name of Jesus, I'm free. And who the son is set free is free in peace. Because everything he freed me from in 2000, going on 23 now, I'm still free from it. I never returned back to men and alcohol, drugs, cigarettes. I never returned back. There's some things, anger. Now, ooh, now that's the spirit I still have to work with. Because I get angry. But as far as I can remember in the Bible, it said when the Lord came in the door, Lord Jesus came in, and they were gambling and doing all kinds of stuff in the house. His spirit of anger stood up too. And he started flipping the tables. He said, it's all right to get angry, just don't see it. So you have to know when I, I'm tired of this, throw my hands up, and I'm going back and pray. Because I can't even do nothing. What Pastor Lane said, I'm going to put you in the hands of the Lord. Keep following me. Because I know what to do. I'm not going to curse you. I'm not going to lose my anointing cursing nobody, no leadership, no church. Been there. And it held up my promotion. It held up my blessing. I ain't going to curse nobody. So if you want me to help you beat them up, you got the wrong partner today. I've been there. Profit means nothing. The best thing you can do is to go back and cover yourself and pray. That's all we can do. Put it back in the hand of the master. He know the plans he got for them. Most of us want him to destroy something. Kill them. Get them. But did he get us? Did he kill us? Thank you, Jesus. He's still delivering us, y'all. Even when we don't like it. Even when it's bitter herbs. It's something good in there. Because the Father is about salvation. He's about saving souls. And not 
causing us to die prematurely. He trying to save our life. Even through the people that you don't like, don't want to receive from, don't want to hear, don't want to see coming. He trying to save your life. So we thank him today. Thank him for all of him. He said he told God that he had just had enough. You ever told God you just got to had enough? Man of God, prophet of God told God he had enough. So don't look at me crazy when I walk out the door and say I'm through, I got enough. My apostle said there were plenty of days she didn't want to leave her house. Plenty of days. She said, Lord, I want to be with. And then I must have been a bunch of women in church because she said, them women? <laughs> Go to show you. They're keeping the house of God open. But there's so much discord in the house of God. So much jealousy. So much envy. So much strife. All that mess. So you think because you don't smoke or drink and you ain't sleep around that you got no sin. They might be weights right. holding up your ministry. Like people can't deserve it when you got an attitude at them. Or when you don't like them. Or when you're blocking them. Got a lot of blessing blockers in the church. Wow. We thank God for Moses and Jonah. They both wished at some point that they could just die. They just ran. Just sick and tired. And then what the word of God was reminding me even just this morning. That Jesus too. In Gethsemane. He was very distressed. Very distressed. And I mean this is like from one week to the next. I'm like aren't you still showing me people. That was dealing with severe depression at some point. So it's for us to know. That on this journey because you came over on the Lord's side. Don't mean you exempt from things. These are precious in duty. You're pressing your way through, brother. Eric. So don't, don't be overwhelmed or overtaken by the things of life. You go back to the word of God. Everything. What he said in the Amplified Bible, Ecclesiastes 3.15. That which is has already been. And that which will be has already been. For God seeks what has passed by so that history repeats itself. <laughs> so what you gonna do, prove the word to be wrong? So when it come back and repeat through you, then you can say, I heard that before. No, it's okay when it hit somebody else though. Huh? We okay when it hit over there. But Lord have mercy, not over him. Good God Almighty. Look at the men and women of God, Loretta Williams and Pastor Apostle and you know, uh, what's the name, Bar Barons, her, all them great men and women of God were sold out. You know how many times they've probably been depressed right on the altar? Nothing to be ashamed of. And they say, I wear my feeling on my sleeve, you can see it on my face. But sometimes you get tired of uh, what you call it, denying it or pretending. Something I was talking about on the radio uh, just Thursday. People get tired of working under pressure. You know, it's sort of like if I say who I really am, they won't believe in me no more. If I say what I really feel, they'll fire me. If I say, why do you have people walk around on eggshells and they're afraid to express themselves now? Because you're the higher one in authority. You might have overcome it. If you've been doing ministry 40 years, you ought to have seen everything. But somebody else might have not been touched. Jesus was led to the wilderness for the 40 days. The Holy Spirit said it out there, but he still had to prove that you got everything because he was still in the flesh, even though he's the son of God, he got everything. I'm still coming to represent you all in my humanity, so I still got to be tempted. We ain't been tempted everywhere. Now stay been tempted everywhere. She up under great tiles and tests right now with her body. Oh God, Bishop. Right after Apostle left, being hit severely. Prophet, as you know, it don't matter how long you've been walking with the Lord. We all get hit. That's right. It don't exempt us. By his stripes, we still are healed. Pastor Katrina just went to take a trip. And their church is called the healing. Healing temple, healing deliverance or whatever. It don't matter. You call this divine presence. Well, I should be able to meet him there. I should be able to feel his presence there. I should be able to know that he's been resting there. The fire of God, the flames of fire. At some point, 
I should be able to see the fire of God on her life. At some point, something she says should break some yokes off of me. How God pierce the ears of that people right now, even right now, that they may hear and receive. Who we'll break the yoke of bondage off from right now? To keep sitting up under the word and not receive the word of God and allow it to do. He said, preach the captives free. Nobody has to lay hands on you. The word of God is effective. It will do what he sent it to do if your hearts are right. If your hearts are right. Because when I heard that one word cry tonight, it didn't matter what he had said before or after. It didn't matter what that been song. Let that spirit keep following you. They going to come, you're going to slam around and rebuke it and set it free. Because it's not trying to be free. It wants to mimic the people of God. That's what it wants to do. Without cause. Without cause. No sacrifice. Not so. It cost Jesus. It cost him. It cost Father. He had to turn his back on his own self, his own son. It cost. Oh, boy, I can roll my eyes at that spirit again. When I get angry, it's not at you, but I hate spirits. Them evil spirits dominating the world. The church people got us all foolish and think that we're doing something. In Jonah 3, 4 and 3, said, so Therefore now, O Lord, I beseech thee, oh, my, take my life, beseech thee my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. We all going to go through something. If you're not going through it today, just hold on and wait. Just hold on and wait. You ain't seen nothing yet. And the higher you go up, he said, too much is given, much more is required. So why you want to follow me? And somebody asked me the other day, how many cars? Somebody gave you at least three or four, but they was tickles, but at least it got me off the bus. But most people want brand new. Yeah. I ain't had brand new. I was living by faith. Faith became my spiritual name in 2001, and I literally had to wait on every nickel and dime from 2009 for God to prove himself to show me that I got you. It wasn't in the bank account. <laughs> It was in the faith realm. I had to grab it and pull it down and hold on to it for dear life. He didn't let you have so much that you wouldn't need faith for tomorrow. I ain't going to let you have that much because you're going to press into me. You have faith for tomorrow for tomorrow. But my mercy is new every day. Tomorrow you're going to have faith for tomorrow if you make it. And I've been living like this for 22 years. You don't see it till it show up. Most of us don't have the patience to wait on that. God had to do that in me. So I wouldn't go out and get a man and pick the wrong one. So I wouldn't go out and sell myself a prostitute the anointing of God. So I wouldn't go out and, and beat churches and just do. God had to show me how to do this. I didn't know how to live like that. I had two marriages, had a husband around always paying the car notes and the bill. You don't always know when you ask God to use you what he's going to do. And how he's going to do a lot of us want to go to surgery, we want to go to the doctors, we want quick fixes. But let me tell you something, just as I said about that medication, some of it is worse. But before we go to the Lord, before we go to the altar, daddy don't think anything wrong with me. I'm not going to that getting on the altar. They're going to be like, what did you do now? You say what you want to say about me because I know how to run to the city of refuge. I know how to run, see. I ain't studying all that. But they'd rather run to the doctors and the surgeon. Then they cut this out, you cut that out, and then they give you about seven. I told you when I came to this ministry, I had 17 prescriptions. Now, don't you know that's enough to make anything crazy? You ain't even got to be diagnosed with crazy. Look at the pill bottle. Look at the side effects of all of it. We pray to the Holy Spirit for counseling. That's what we have to do every day. And that's one of the most least ministries in the church and in people heart. They honestly think if I call pastor, I can get it done. Pastor have to pray too. Pastor have to pray to get the understanding, the wisdom, even the strength to deal with you when she need to be rested. That's why I said teach them how to pray for themselves. Teach them how to come to the altar. That's what apostle did with me when I came in. She said, follow me. And I got me some water and I followed her. Yeah, that's what she told me to do. She said, stay on the front row. 
and follow me. I was helping Sister Alma outlaw that out. She that was outlawing. I was helping her. She told me now. And I'm like, God said, uh-uh, you lose her. I said, God, I woke up three mornings, three Sunday mornings, and told her to loose me. And she said, turn her loose. I said, well, who got her? She, she said, he, she'll get somebody. God told me to take my hands off you. Sit down. Because he said he's getting ready to use you. I, I mean, I hadn't been in the church a year. I had no idea what she was talking about. I was straight out of Baptist church. So God will throw a monkey wrench in your plans. He throw a monkey wrench in the leader's plan. Pastor said, I ain't touching you no more. And she did. And like a year later or less, she was gone out of making anyway. And I'm still sitting there looking like, well, what am I going to do now? So some stuff got to be raised up by the Holy Spirit. Uh-huh. Some things just got to be done by the Holy Spirit. Because God knows what he's doing. After she told me that God said, loose up, not that church shut down right afterwards. And she had to minister and pray for me from afar. She was not underfoot. I doubted the whole while she was in Charlotte. I talked to her 12 times. I doubted. Nothing but the Holy Ghost. So the mistakes I made, God had to help correct them for me in me. So I wouldn't be leaning on other people. Props. Too many people got props. They don't have to do nothing for themselves. They don't have to find the answer because they got somebody to find it for them. You see, you have to teach people how to do for yourself. I will always be there. Pastor will always be there. Holy Spirit said, He won't. Come on. You got to know. Jesus won't. The Holy Spirit will unless you send Him out. And we got people doing that too. It don't work for me. Talking about the Holy Spirit. I had a man yesterday asked me, Oh, are you one of those Jehovah Witnesses or what? Because I know it's a lot of stuff they don't do. I said, no, I'm charismatic. He said, what is that? I said, I believe in miracles. <laughs> I believe in miracles. Because I'm a walking miracle. Uh-huh. For me not to fall by the wayside and my leaders left me right after I come in. A walking miracle, because I could have been as crazy as a bed bug as some people I see walking around now and not ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ and telling somebody else the truth of the word so that they can find the Lord for themselves. And that's my greatest desire, is not to be needy. We need our shepherds, because you're going to always need the shepherds. You need your prophets, but we are messengers too. And we got a soul. We, got a, we need relationship with the Lord. And if you don't tell me nothing, I can't tell you nothing. He trying to work on Shirley. You hear me? He working on me. So I don't have a word for you. You didn't get it while it was in the atmosphere. Too many people waiting on you to put a prophecy line out there. Where they can prop a lie. You see the woman of God coming in as soon as she come in the ministry was for her inner spirit operate flow gone. Boom. That's it. God didn't finish with that. Sit up there waiting on your time. Out of the box. Be spirit led. Be spirit led. We thank you, Jesus, and we give God the glory for everything. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your soul. Too many people so aggravated to you can't get no rest because you don't know how to rest. You don't know how to be still. You don't know how to comprehend the veins of the spirit. Don't know how to rest. He is the Prince of Peace. He give you that place of rest where you can sit down with him and he can minister to you. But we so busy. We his creation. We supposed to be sitting at his feet. Amen. Yeah, we got Martha's and Mary. But I thank God for the one who found the right thing. She decided I'm going to sit at his feet. I'm going to sit right at his feet. And it's a a cost to pay to sit down. Yeah. It's a cost to pay. You think it's just as simple as I just wake up and say a prayer. We can be silent. He answers in the silence and the stillness. And most of us can't be still. Well. That busy body spirit. All in everybody Kool-Aid. That ain't the way. That's not the will of God for your life. He wants you to know him more than anything else. I made oh, you yeah, for yeah. me. Amen. And we put him last. Wow. We put him last. Hey. 
Because we so busy trying to minister to everything else. And we miss the mark ourselves. Half of them don't care about what you say. And you can say 99 scriptures. They don't care about half of what you say. It means something to you. It's going over their heads, half of them. Because the spirit of the Lord is not resting upon them the way it should be. And so their eyes are not open to the things of God that are most up. So you give them a word. I say, come talk to the most. Have mercy, Jesus. Have mercy, little most. Have rest upon us. And the little most do internal surgery in every one of our hearts right now. Yes. Uh, open up our ears, our spiritual ears, our hearts to receive uh, your yes. voice so that we can never deny the power of you that's flowing in our lives right now. And the voice, I talk, I talk the voice. Cause you will do miracles, miracles so well, you will do them. Not just through Catherine Coleman and Smith, Wigginsworth and Benny Hinn, but you'll do them through us. Oh, talk, I talk the voice. Oh God, if we would only believe and receive our faith that we so came for us to get tired. We do get overtaken. We get pure drained sometimes because we love the people enough to tell them and shake them up and shake up the foundation. Don't you know God love you? He's not interested whether you're going to get it right or not. He is right. If you follow him, you will line up with his will for your life. No, nothing else makes sense sometimes. Won't nothing else. Won't nothing else make no sense sometimes. You gonna have to follow him. When you don't see nothing, Apostle said, when you walk out there, he left you go step off a cliff, and the road ain't gonna show up till you step out. I let it get top top. Jesus, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. He don't show up till you step out, and too many of us trying to hold on to every problem. So you ain't gonna get much more because you don't walk by faith. You don't walk by faith. You don't walk by faith. You waiting on them, waiting on everything that just happened for you. I remember Minister Williams told me once that you are Shamar prophet, and I was like, Oh God, somebody always telling me something I am. And I'm like, God have mercy when I I think Lisa was having a seizure or something, we was in the mountain. And when I came back down, that's what she told me. She said, you're supposed to be watching and praying. Those are watchmen on the wall, in case you don't understand that. You waiting on me to be a prophet like somebody else. I can't be like somebody else for you. I am not prophet as matter. I don't tell the Holy Spirit how to flow through me. If he called me to be a watchman and an intercessor, that's my assignment. But then you got to trust the watchman. <laughs> oh, good God Almighty, Jesus. I can send 70 warnings. But if don't for one make it out, it's because that's the only one that really believed and received. Sometimes you're the only one who will eat your own food, and that hurts. Good God Almighty. Only one. I heard my sister say something on the prayer line just Tuesday night. God had given her that word way back in 2003 or 4. But she kind of just shook it under the rug and paid it no attention. And she had to go back and repent. But something God gave her through me 17, 18 years ago. My God. It's sad. It's real sad. Because look at the stuff you went through in 17, 18 years. Because you're looking at me. That's Joseph and Mary's son. That's the car All right. All right. Amen. You hear me, bro, Bear? They looking at who you were. And nobody wants to receive it because it didn't come from apostle or pastor. And it is well. God is teaching me how to take it in stride. Keep on moving. One thing my apostle said. That's right. Thank you, baby. She said one thing about it. You just release what God give you. And it's up to them. It still hurt them. It hurt when you see him walk straight into that Mack truck. Amen. You see the church not rising up because God gave you a word for him and nobody wants to receive it because right. this is not the play of God out for this house. Right. Like God can't shift. Yes, he does. Yes. 
we praise and we bless the name of the Lord God Almighty. That which is has already been. You ain't no new wonder. <laughs> ain't no new wonder. Come on. God. Everything, both past and future, is preordained and there is nothing new to be discovered. You're not all that fabulous. I love the word of God. I love good teaching. Oh, yeah. But I love receiving it so it can do something in me. Because I can sit in a house and have a 30 minutes of straight praise and worship. But that one word, that one nugget, be the one that'll take me on for the next 15, 20 years to have me running. Because I heard the voice of God. Because a lot of stuff gonna come. And you have to denounce it from your ear and your spirit. We all get oppressed. Don't get possessed. Don't cancel out the Holy Spirit. Now then you really are the best. It's one thing to be oppressed. It's something else to be possessed now. We got a lot of that going on too. Mental illness is something else. Mm -hmm. Bipolar, schizophrenic. Those spirits are something else, and they're running rapidly in the body of believers. Amen. Jesus. And we don't have to be, because the Holy Spirit is jealous, and it's not going to rest in there with it. So if you put more of this in, it's going to drown that out. But we won't sit still long enough to allow him to fill us up to the overflow. Amen. You know, we get a little charge, you stick your thing in there, he's almost dead. Let me get 3%. It'll hold me till I get to the car. Let me get 17 more percent. It'll hold me till I get to the high. Let me get. How stupid. Well, well. You're ministering from your overflow. Then you out there trying to save the world because somebody told you you were fabulous and you prayed good. Well. I didn't say Jesus wealth and I prayed in you. Because it's out of pure practice. Yeah. I'm not impressed. Really? I can walk out on it, it won't take nothing from me. Because I know what I see, and I know what I hear, and I know who I know. He said, I would do greater things through you. That means you got to show me the greater things that I'm dealing with, that I'm fighting with, that I'm up against. How else am I going to be able to stand against the wise of the devil if I'm blindsided by everything that's around me? And I, I, I say, see, I need to know where my enemies at. I need to know what that's he's flowing through. I need to know who following me and why you're following me. A lot of manipulative spirits out there. I rebuke them in the name of Jesus out of this house. In the name of Jesus. In the name of your manipulation, intimidation, bullying. All of this got to go in the name of Jesus. It will not sit in this house. It will not rest in this house. God Almighty, we feel in Katatara Let your fire go through this house and burn it up, expose everything that's crooked and foul in here. You will not be able to sit in this house and rest. You will not be able to. I declare it and decree it in the name of Jesus. This is not your hiding place. This is the place where the Spirit of the Lord dwells. If you won't help, you in the right place. Uh, but if you are cursed, thing, you're going to die. Because you're going to dry up from the root in the name of Jesus today. You're going to dry up, you hear me? Oh, that's a tatar of our city. You will not corrupt this house of our city, tatar of our city. You will fall in line with the order of this house in the name of Jesus. You foul, evil, smelly, stinking. What you show me, God. Now they all say get to the whole sea. I see only what you show me, God. And I stand in my full authority with power over the evil one of my soul and the souls of my sisters and my brothers. I stand in all authority over that black witch. Jesus, you will bow, you black witch. 
you will bow. Every knee gonna bow. You return to wish you come from. This is not your hour. Not in this house. The Lord is turning over the tables even right now. You will not make my house a den of thieves. He flipping it. You'll be able to see even clearer where it rests. We pray blessings over the house of people in this house. Everyone in this house. Our house. Thank God for the blood over the dopo. Sister Emma, let that spirit out of this house. Let that spirit out of this door. Because it's not invited back in. You come in at the door. You submit to the authority in this house. If you come back in here again, you submit to the authority in this house. You can get up and be gone right now in the name of Jesus. But if you choose to die, you still sit. Because your flesh do not die anyway. The flesh got to die. The flesh got to die. Nobody interested in your fabulous flesh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for raising up seers. Thank you for raising up Shamar prophets. Thank you, Lord God, for the watchmen on the wall. Don't play with every spirit. Don't invite every spirit in the end. Make sure, Lord God, that you anoint the urshers and the porters over every door. That they will be able to identify with these spirits and not even allow them in the house. Fully weapon your people, Lord God. Help them not to be in denial to the things that you called them to do. Help them to walk in authority and to walk by faith. This is the day and the hour, Lord God. If we don't watch out for your house and your people, then we're going to take every one of us out with our eyes wide open. Sitting in the house of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Let's praise the Lord and give him the glory. For everything he's done. Everything he said he would do. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all gotta remember Jesus said in his own word, if it's possible, Lord God, let this cup pass from me. And then he said, Lord, not my will. Let your will be done. And that's what we gotta thank God. So it's funny, not your will, but his will. As an evangelist, it's not your will, but his will. That all be saved. All be saved. And you have to put it back in the hands of the Lord. Because we 
we do it our way, we gonna mess up something. That's why I appreciate that word cry tonight. Let that woman keep on following you. Paul got tired after Whitey. She followed for a while. She got tired. You gonna stop in your track and you gonna rebuke something. It's gonna be gone forever because it's gonna change their life. And then the people that was getting glory for the very thing that were following you around can't get no glory off it no more. Why? Because the gift was gone off their life. <laughs> a new man moved in. How about that? A new man moved in. Holy Spirit, we thank you for revealing all things to all men who want to receive. We give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you the praise and thanksgiving for all things of make you. Christ Jesus, the head of our lives. God, we thank you. We bless you for divine presence. We bless you for the souls in this house. We bless you for the headship in this house. Thank you for the strength in this house. Thank you for the glory in this house. Thank you for the victory in this house, Jesus. We walk by faith and not by sight. Thank you, Jesus. We are no longer bound, but we are free. We are free in Christ Jesus. We free don't we? Thank you, Jesus. To God be the glory. We will turn it back over to our pastor. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for sharing your love, your faith, and your grace with me. You're more than a